uh, still moving around up here. And um, if that's the case, then we'll start making that list, and then you guys can decide on on the topic area or the issue that you want to track. How does that sound? Sounds good. 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 Okay. All right. So everybody has to speak up. I want this is going to be a democratic process. <laughs> so, what do you? Oh, not everybody at once, guys. Um, one at a time. John, we voted you Oh, John, it's like that. Yeah, John. Okay. Um, um, so, um, um, Did, that Chelsea, group? would you mind uh, explaining that? You want to explain just what, what conference you went to? Okay. Uh, last Thursday and Friday, I wasn't at school because I was at Olympia and we were talking, it was a LEAP conference, and they were talking about PIP bills that are like, that are currently going on right now. So the HB 1488 is expanding higher education opportunities for certain students. So that's, that's, that means like expanding more college bound scholarship. So I know like that's like, that's in the process. And concerning witnessing a student college bound scholarship pledge like let's say your parents can't sign it like they'll let your counselor sign it or like a teacher sign it and then i'm um, expanding dual language and bilingual instructions for early learners through secondary students is to expand dual language and bilingual instruction for students so those are some of the <coughs> policies that are being discussed if you guys want to look at it yeah they went for, what does leap stand for again uh, yeah can you post it to theirs to their thing so what we're going to do is uh, post a link to the bill that's at a, a, a legislative website, um, which is commonly known as ledge.wa.gov. It's a legislative bill tracking site, and it has a whole lot of information. And this is actually the site that we're going to ask you guys to be taking a look at as we, as we move through the process and a bill, uh, you guys decide on a bill and, and We'll know what its current status is. We'll know who the um, supporters of the bill, the bill sponsors and co-sponsors, and we'll also know uh, in the hearings who testified for, who testified against, and kind of an outline of what the issue might be. So in this case, you're probably seeing uh, House Bill 1488. Um, can you move the cursor down a little bit? Uh, here you've got the uh, bill action. So this is a bill that's alive. Down there you'll see at the uh, the last posting of 2017 regular session, February 20, uh, February 17th, executive action was taken. Uh, can you hit uh, committee? Oh, it doesn't say whether it passed or not. Um, so that was just today at 10 a.m. So it doesn't indicate that it passed, but I got to tell you that more often than not, when a bill is posted for executive action, then a vote is taken and it usually passes. Uh, mm -hmm. They don't bring bills up for a vote unless the votes really are there. Um, oftentimes, uh, you don't want to have a vote on a bill where it actually fails because that truly kills the bill. Um, and kind of locks people into positions on it. So this one does look like it's alive. So that'll be one to look at. Let's, would you mind just, uh, uh, let's go go to committee materials. And I wanna, oh no, go down to house bill analysis. Sorry, up just a little bit. Are they seeing this whole thing? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so this house bill analysis is a really helpful document. This is put together by the legislative uh, professional staff. And um, what they do is, is uh, take the legislative language and actually translate it into English so that everybody can really understand uh, in more layman's terms what the heck is going on. So here's your higher ed opportunities for students. Uh, Representative Hansen is, um, uh, Drew Hansen is a uh, pretty well respected, uh, but rather new legislator, uh, and um, 
and then it has a couple of co-sponsors on there which is a good sign that means that it's got support from a number of people and in this case uh, you've got both republicans and democrats on this bill um it went to higher education let's see uh students to qualify for resident tuition under the 1079 category um will you go down and let's figure out what 1079 is i don't do higher ed so this is actually a good exercise for me as well right there up go back up <coughs> So the summary of the bill is going to tell us like what is it actually going to do and it, it will tell you what it actually does uh students who qualify for resident 1079 category eligible for cbs um will you keep going down oh this is great okay they don't even define what 1079 category is okay we go back up to the top um non-resident student having a U or a T non-immigrant status okay so in this case this might be a fascinating uh, bill because um, it delves into the immigration question which is obviously a hot topic on a national basis as well uh, uh, and in particular here in the state of Washington um, given that the, our state attorneys Attorney General Bob Ferguson uh, filed a lawsuit against the president of the United States, which is not something that normally happens. And um, he won that case here at the federal court level, and it was appealed to the uh, Ninth District uh, Court in in uh, San Francisco. They upheld that judgment. Now the president is in the uh, process of 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 rescinding that order likely and then issuing a new order on immigration it is a very hot topic this could be a really interesting issue for you directly for all of you students this might be an opportunity for funding that helps if you are um, not able to afford college on your own and um, it also delves into the immigrant uh, immigration question so what I'd ask is that we would be looking at uh, what this 1079 category would be, uh, and there would be some opportunity for some uh, good research for you guys um, on a bill like this. So, ah, here we go, category 1079 Wikipedia. You gotta love the uh, production staff here at TVW. They do a heck of a job. Yes, they do. Charlie, Charlie, this is Sorry, I'm not going. Oh, looks like he's going to try and type it into your, into the feed here. Can you guys see a Google? Yeah. Yeah. Search? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. So this is David Johnson doing a little bit on a Google search. 1079. Oh, Huh. Okay. Yeah, that might be a good thing for you guys to search. So let's definitely put that one on our list. I'm guessing that that moved out of committee because you do have... Um, Republicans and Democrats in support of this bill. And if it makes it out of the House of Representatives, it will be an interesting bill to follow in the Senate to see what kind of response the Senate gives it. So let's put that one on our list. What's another bill that you guys might be interested in? Another topic. <laughs> There's a pretty big issue out here, uh, or here in Olympia, I suppose, on uh, police use of force, which again plays to some issues that have been happening nationally. Um, the 
issue is uh, whether the uh, current laws in the state of Washington give too much legal protection to police officers in their use of force um, and uh, whether that should be um, weakened a little bit to in the defendant's favor uh, rather than giving a, a really high bar against prosecution of a police officer for excessive use of force. Um, it was in today's newspaper that the uh, Washington Association of Police Chiefs and Sheriffs um, agreed to some um, language that would that would uh, weaken the protections for the police, which is a big deal because that association is uh, kind of chartered with uh, protecting uh, law enforcement and um, uh, for them to uh, be willing to enter into some conversations about this and actually agree to something that is uh, uh, less protective of police officers. That's a big deal. So now you get an interesting legislative debate. It was unclear whether the legislature was going to move forward on this issue um, in Washington, but with that recent announcement, we might see a bill like that move. So you might want to put that on your list as something to discuss. I think an interesting, um, an interesting piece of background on this is that the uh, the issue was really brought forward last year, and the Black Lives Matter uh, group was the one that kind of brought this forward, and um, it was a Thurston County group of, of folks uh, engaged in Black Lives Matter, and they were unable to get some legislation last year, but what they did do is get a study over the uh, course of the inner and um, uh, in that study uh, it came out that this was a very high bar uh, to uh, to overcome for a defendant and um, the legislature ended up or, or I guess in the course of the study there was a recommendation of the legislature to modify that um, legal standard and now you see a piece of legislation coming out of it so to a really uh, high degree, that demonstrates the power of uh, the people's voice in the legislative process. You might not get what you want right away, but there is a process that can yield legislation like this. So that might be a good one for Andy, for you, for the class to look at as what is uh, your civic responsibility as citizens? Uh, how can you affect the process? And how do you go about making changes, even though you see roadblocks in your way, obstacles? If you're willing to take the time, you can get there. And this bill might show the culmination of that. Oh, 1079 is undocumented students. Wow. So that is right on. I'll share that. Um, I was wondering about the law that uh, was qualified for the BTQ, uh, GTQ Act. By the uh, president uh, about uh, gay married, or no, gay people or bisexual people having the ability to have ba uh, get babies, adopt babies, and adopt. Having the ability to do what? Adopt. Adopt, adopt. adopt. adopt babies. Um, that is established, I believe, in law right now that a married couple, no matter what their identity, sexual identity might be, can adopt children. In fact, there's a sitting state legislator, a state senator who a uh, partner and he have adopted, I believe, triplets and um, they are um, a happily married couple raising three boys, as I recall. And I don't think that there's any legislation down here that would um, alter the status of uh, gay couples to be able to adopt. So I don't, you know, it's a, it's a good social topic 
but it's not a topic <clears throat> with any kind of legislation that is uh, in debate down here in Olympia. So um, it's, it's not probably an issue for this particular uh, part of your class discussion. We have another question. I got a question. Uh, my name is Benjamin Wheelock. I'm the captain of our baseball team here. <laughs> and um, <laughs> That's fine. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, I was in captain's council the other day, and our athletic director, uh, Wendy Mallett, she said that uh, there was some kind of issue with legislation in the WIAA's independence. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was so I was so confused. Was talking. <laughs> what is that situation, and what is going on there, basically? So the WIAA is the Washington Interscholastic Athletic Association. They are a separate um, body from all the school districts. They essentially oversee the uh, athletic activities, I guess, for all the school districts across the state and um, help to form the various districts and the leagues that, you know, you all are in um, by school uh, size and, you know, whether you're a, a class A or a double A or a triple A, I think it is. Um, and, um, the WIAA has had a lot of autonomy over the years, and I think that there are some folks who feel like maybe they've gotten out uh, ahead of their skis a little bit, meaning that they are overreaching and in some areas, and there's some legislation I did see where they were testifying the other day. I, I've only dealt with the WIAA on a, a limited uh, matter, but um, there is legislation out there, so to the degree that um, you all want to take a look at um, a quasi-state agency, which is, I think is what WIAA is, um, and how it interacts with school districts, which are also quasi-governmental agencies. They are government. Um, and its relationship then to the policymaking branch in Olympia, that might be a uh, a good study on, as I discussed with you last time, two weeks ago, you know, you've got the federal government, you've got the judicial branch, you've got the congressional branch, you've got the president, then below that you've got all the states, and you've got state government, and then they authorize counties and cities to form, and they also have, in Washington state, they have responsibility over the school districts and school education in general. And then they delegate that function out to 295 districts across the state. And on top of that, or tangential, I suppose, to that, you've got the Washington Interscholastic Athletic Association that works with all the districts in the athletics department. They don't necessarily report to the school districts. They've got their own body that they report to, a, a board of directors or something like that. But they're still responsible to the state. So it's a good it's a good study on how you would organize complex organizations like the athletic activities of all the school districts that are overseen by the state of Washington. So um, it's a, it, it might be an interesting study in um, structures of government as well as the underlying issue and I have no idea what the underlying issue is with WIAA but uh, to the degree you guys are interested in something like that it would be a a, a good topical matter I think for this uh, for this class so just recap on what we have that might be some questions but I've been I've been kind of taking a little bit of notes on the board as well and, and my students as well should have their own notes. Um, just, I just want to point out too, because the last time we, we talked was two weeks ago, and we're not going right. to talk for another two or three weeks, right? So that's why it is kind of important to kind of record what we're doing and taking notes so that you can remember what we last talked about, right? Um, and so I have three 
main topics up there. I was wondering if you could add to it, but we have the higher education with immigration, um, maybe undocumented students, which was the category 1079. Then we have the police use of force, and then the WIA independence. Um, are there any other categories or topics or things that you guys are interested in? Or um, Mr. Brown, is there any other ones that you think uh, are, are would we would be interested in? Oh, uh, yes. huh? Nobody wants to talk about education funding. Nobody wants to talk about school construction. Nobody wants to talk about um, taxation and loopholes, if there are any, or um, nobody wants to talk about loopholes. Can we talk about loopholes? <laughs> I will give you just a brief on that. I don't think it's something that you want to follow unless I don't know of any big tax bills that are there is a sales tax exemption on certain products, but um, so so just just for background, and I'll make this quick, I want you guys to think of another matter. I mean that there, there's a lot of issues that you could cover here. Um, uh, there's the term loopholes comes up on a regular basis when they talk about funding in the state budget. And um, when, when people use the term loopholes, it's my opinion that they are trying to attack a tax policy that they don't necessarily agree with. And oftentimes, uh, in the last couple of years, the legislature or the governor's office has said, we should not be allowing um, uh, certain corporations to be able to take a tax deduction for uh, one thing or another. And my argument back is that the legislature has affirmatively set tax policy um, and there are no loopholes. What they've done is determined that in the case of agriculture, there is no uh, business and occupation tax for the production of agriculture because the um, cost of producing potatoes or asparagus or apples or wine grapes um, is so high that adding an additional tax onto that would uh, unnecessarily diminish the value of that uh, sector of the economy. And so it's not a loophole as much as it is tax policy that the legislature has adopted and that the legislature is unable to change because there's too much support for it. So when you talk loopholes, when you hear the term loopholes, you shouldn't just automatically assume that somebody is cheating the tax system. What they're doing is using tax policy that has been debated and adopted by the legislature, signed into law by the governor, by the way, at one point or another. And the, the companies or nonprofit organizations, churches don't pay taxes uh, on a number of things, um, are simply uh, following the law as it's written. So just a fun little factoid for all of you. Taxes are going to be an issue this year, let's be honest about it. In the education funding arena, um, the, the, the state Supreme Court has demanded that the legislature fully fund basic education, stop relying on local levies, which in Franklin Pierce are quite high uh, for the residents of, of the Franklin Pierce School District. And um, the legislature is debating two pathways. The House is saying, yeah, let's go ahead and fully fund basic education, fund all the cost of of uh, uh, compensation for teachers and staff and everybody else, but we have to find another $1.5 billion or so, and where do we get that? They're talking about carbon taxes, they're talking about um, uh, perhaps an increase in this uh, B&O tax for uh, services, which includes professional services like lawyers, doctors, architects, but also for services like um, hairdressers, um, uh, 
uh, and other uh, non non professional services. And then they're also talking about a sales tax or a uh, capital gains tax. So I don't know how they find out find one and a half billion dollars, but they're sure looking for it over there. The Senate, on the other hand, is looking for an increase in property taxes while reducing local state property tax while reducing local property taxes. So there are going to be tax related issues as it relates to funding education this year. Unfortunately, I don't think that uh, issue is going to get resolved before the end of your school year. And you would have to, if you want to follow it, we could, but you'd have to uh, wait until July, probably until you see any kind of a resolution and maybe even not then. It could be that the legislature is unable to get an agreement and we have to work in the next year and we'll see what the state Supreme Court says to that. So my my preference, Andy, would be to find a bill that is likely to make it through the process. And the end of the legislature legislative session is April 23rd. And um, one of the bills that we discussed here, one of the three, the uh, um, Opportunity Scholarship, the um, Police Use of Force, or the WIAA bill, if that thing is still alive, I, I, we don't know, um, would be good topics for all of you to take a look at. So, so what I guess, Andy, I think a question is what what is going to have the most interest to the majority of the students do? Do you care much about the um, interaction between one state agency like the WIAA and other school districts or what the issue is there? Uh, do you want to follow something along the lines of immigration and uh, scholarship opportunities, if people care about that. You want to follow something along the lines of police use of force and the legal um, standards that govern whether a defendant can sue police officer for um, excessive force and what the pros and cons of a particular situation might be. It kind of gets into more of a legal arena as well. So I think that's something for all of you to have a conversation about. Um, those are issues that are uh, national in scope. You might be reading about them periodically in a newspaper. Um, so you might be able to help form an opinion, not only on what's going on here in Olympia, but also uh, outside of Olympia in the broader discussion that's going on nationwide on on those issues all right so i guess thinking about um, the next time we meet isn't until i think it's the 10th of march sounds about uh, so right a couple something like that yeah so maybe two or three i think it's three weeks from now so uh between now and then i guess our plan would be to to choose one of those topics um and then uh i feel like we could spend one day or, or two days maybe just researching a little bit about the bill itself um, and just kind of just just looking at the, the summary or the, the, the analysis where it's not legal language but just seeing what what exactly is does it say um, and then so we're a little bit more prepared and on the 10th then we can kind of figure out where we want to go from there so if you guys can come up with a topic uh, in that first week that you're back and then Andy maybe let me know that would be perfect and I can help do some background as well as it's moving through rather than coming in cold. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. Anybody else have any uh, last questions here? <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again, Charlie. We appreciate you. Thank you, Charlie Brown. Thank you, everybody. Good to see you again. Have a great right. vacation. Everybody else say thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.